Hi, I'm Jeremy. And I'm Ben. And together we are 15 Degrees North. Today we're going to show you the sights and sounds of Israel. Israel. Israel is a country in the eastern Mediterranean that sits in the center of the Levant region of the Middle East. A country since 1948, the nation has a fraught history and tensions remain to this day. However, the country is safe to visit and people flock from all over the world to see its sites and visit the holy places within its capital, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the holiest site in the world for Jews and Christians, as well as the third holiest for Muslims. A lot of significant things happen here for all of the Abrahamic faiths and we visited the sites for all three, beginning with the Western Wall, or Wailing Wall, the last remaining remnant of the Jewish Temple. Demolished in 70 CE, during the Siege of Jerusalem by the Romans, the Second Temple had stood for 500 years, having previously replaced Solomon's Temple, which had been destroyed by the Babylonians. Initially a modest structure, it became much more ornate after King Herod the Great refurbished it. But of course, that is all gone now. Today, Jews from across the world come here to touch the wall and say prayers, which Jeremy wanted to do for his uncle. And it was a powerful moment. I got to honour my late uncle, whom I loved very much, in the same way that my ancestors did for millennia. On the site of the old temple now stands the Temple Mount, with its Islamic shrine, the Dome of the Rock. This was a site where Muslims believe that Muhammad ascended into heaven. An Islamic shrine has existed here since the 7th century, but the current structure dates from 1023. The Temple Mount is a holy place for both Jews and for Muslims. It was the site of the Temple of David uh, for the Jews, and it was also the site for Muslims where they believe that Muhammad ascended into heaven. Subsequently, the security is very tight. Um, Muslims can walk in when they want to, but people who are not Muslim have to queue up. There's checkpoints, there's uh, security guards with guns, militia, police, whomever, um, and it's very difficult, and you can only access between very specific hours. So before you come, it's definitely worth checking online to see whether or not you're going to be able to access this at all. Despite the high security around the Temple Mount, something that did strike us about Jerusalem was how, despite the tensions, people from all faiths and backgrounds were living and working side by side without any real problems. Many Israelis will freely admit that the tension with Palestinians means that Israel is a messy country, but on the flip side, Jerusalem is the one place where everyone being mixed together seems to work. And though the city is divided into quarters for each faith, there's no dividing line between them or any discernible difference in the way they look. And while the Palestinian territories are divided by walls, fences and checkpoints elsewhere, Jerusalem is not. Heading into the Christian quarter and you'll find the Via Dolorosa. This road follows the route that Christians believe Jesus took on his way to be crucified. The stations of the cross are all marked along this route, ending in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which sits on the earliest side for Christians worldwide. The church contains three things. First, there's Jesus' tomb, which has quite a queue to enter. We visited late in the evening to beat the crowd, but still waited 45 minutes. And then there's the rock on which his body is believed to have been prepared for burial. Mm -hmm. 
And then there's the rock on which he was crucified, which is contained in a separate shrine inside. Heading out of Jerusalem, we travel south to explore some of the treasures of the Judean desert. We begin in the stunning Ein Gedi oasis, which is in a ravine where its water tumbles down toward the Dead Sea. It's a nature reserve and it's positively brimming with wildlife. The desert may be hot, but Ein Gedi is certainly cool. Our next stop is the mountaintop fortress of Masada. Built by Herod the Great and completed in 31 BCE, it consists of two vast palaces which are surprisingly well preserved, considering that they are over two millennia old. Benefiting from sweeping views across the desert, it occupies a key strategic location, as well as enjoying more tolerable winter temperatures than nearby Jerusalem. Herod wanted to live in luxury, so he built this palace with all the mod cons including bath, central heating and a glorious dining room with the best view in the fortress. Herod was a client king for the Roman Empire and Masada was built with their money. But the final chapter in Masada's history came during the first Jewish Roman War a hundred years later, in which the occupiers had to put down insurrection and lay siege to the castle they had paid for. Jewish rebels barricaded themselves on the citadel for months, but after the laborious construction of a siege ram and tower, the Roman forces entered the castle to find that all 960 of its inhabitants had committed suicide. They had decided that death was favourable to living under Roman rule, and today these people are still remembered as Israeli symbols of national pride. Obviously, no trip to Israel is complete without spending some time in the Dead Sea. At negative 430 meters, it is the lowest point on Earth. It is also one of the saltiest places on Earth too, with almost 40% salinity. This means that instead of swimming, you float and there is really no feeling like it. How does it feel? Cold. Yeah. <laughs> Um, weird. Quite nice, actually. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Because you're like floating and I'm just like relaxed. Got no control over it. <laughs> Very strange. Love Israel is the home to the three Abrahamic religions, but one we may know less about is the Baha'i faith. In Haifa, a city in the north of Israel, sits the remarkable Baha'i gardens with the Bab shrine at its centre. Containing the remains of Bab, the founder of the faith, Haifa is the holiest place for Baha'i people worldwide. Starting in the 19th century, there are now 8 million Baha'i worldwide, making it the world's fastest growing religion for the past century. You can only access the site of the shrine itself between the hours of 9 and 12. However, there are many viewpoints along the way and it's definitely worth the hike up to the top to get these spectacularly scenic views. Akko or Accra is a historic Arab city near to the Lebanese border. Settled since the Bronze Age, it is one of the oldest continuously inhabited settlements on Earth. It was also the very last town to be held by the Crusaders in the Levant during Middle Ages, before it fell in 1291, marking the end of the Europeans' excursions in the Holy Land.
Our final stop in Israel is the booming modern city of Tel Aviv. A buzzing metropolis, it is filled with huge skyscrapers, modern architecture and lots of very healthy people. No, seriously, the people there are all tanned, toned and beautiful. It's a party city, that's for sure, with revelers coming from all over the world to experience the fun of a night out in Tel Aviv. By far the most liberal city in the Middle East, Tel Aviv is also known for its large LGBT community, who reportedly make up around 20% of its population. Built around the ancient small coastal town of Jaffa, the old town is still worth visiting, but the urban sprawl of Tel Aviv goes far beyond this, making a city of around 4 million people. We absolutely loved our trip to Israel. There is just so much to see and do, but to everyone who's nervous about visiting the country due to its ongoing internal tension, we think you have just to see it to be able to understand how it all works. Yes, the conflict is still ongoing, but Israel has managed to create a successful, rich and liberal country that absolutely works. So come on and see it for yourself. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share and subscribe. And follow us on Instagram at 15 degrees north. Make sure to tune in to our next video to see where in the world we end up next. See ya. Bye. <laughs>